Okay. Show me. Hi there guys, welcome back to the Dutch C channel, thank you very much for tuning in. And in this video I'm gonna explain two things about quadcopters with DJI digital setups, such as this quadcopter here, it has the Cadex Vista digital setup. And so in this video I'm gonna firstly explain how easy it is or isn't uh, to install a separate receiver. If you are considering going digital, buying a quadcopter like this and, and a DJI goggle of course, you might wonder, well yeah but I already have a uh, transmitter, how easy is it to install a separate receiver as these units have a, a, a receiver in them already. So you'll have two receivers in your quadcopter, how easy or awkward is that to get that to work? And yes, obviously you do know that it's possible, but again, how easy is it? And maybe you've already uh, bit the bullet, you've got a quadcopter like this, you want to install a receiver, how to? And uh, well, this is actually my first digital quadcopter, or digital quadcopter, quadcopter with a digital FV system. I'm gonna have to see how it works myself, so during the course of this video I will do that. I'll be using an FRSky RXSR receiver and I'll be using it as an F port receiver, but you could uh, obviously use an S bus receiver instead. So the top has come off, the, the gloves <laughs> have come off so to speak. So first of all, I assume that you've made sure that the quadcopter you've chosen actually has room for a separate receiver even though these receivers are pretty small. Still, uh, this quadcopter I have here, the Holybro Copis Mini, has an abundance of room, as you can tell. More than enough room. I can easily pack a, a lunch packet, <laughs> some sandwiches in, in this quadcopter. So yeah, more than enough room. Again, make sure that the quadcopter you choose actually has room for a separate receiver. And what you see here is actually pretty typical for a uh, digital setup. There I go again, a digital setup. A quadcopter with a digital FV system. This flight controller has two of these white plugs. And in the analog era, the flight controllers generally had one of those. At least one bigger one, maybe a lot of smaller ones for UARTs as well. But again, one bigger one to hook it up to your 4-in-1 ESC with a, uh, a ribbon cable. That's pretty typical, right? And again, in the digital era, we now see two of these bigger connectors. And the second one is to hook up that digital air unit. Plug and play, that's what <laughs> DJI wants to see. Easy peasy Japanesey, uh, easy peasy Chinesey actually, <laughs> actually in this case. Uh, yeah, via this plug, this is that second plug. And actually, let me pull up a diagram of this board. Again, this is pretty typical. The top half of this uh, this diagram is the connector for the 4-in-1 ESC, which uh, most flight controllers nowadays have. And the one we really want to be looking at uh, today is the bottom one. That's uh, the connector that uh, hooks up your air units, your digital air units. So six pins and the fifth and the sixth in this case are for the receiver. So the UART 6 and the ground, pin 5 and 6 in this diagram, are for your receiver. It's an RX pad, UART 6 RX, and that's meant for an S bus receiver. And guess what? That digital air unit, in my case the Cadex Vista air unit, has a built in receiver and it outputs an S bus signal and it hooks up again to that R6. So yeah, plug and play, there's no other wires hooked up to my flight controller, actually only that ribbon cable to the 4-in-1 ESC and the ribbon cable to the, to the air unit. Very easy and clean, and again that's really what DJI wants to see in these uh, quadcopters. Now the question here is, do I disconnect that R6 cause, that's now our receiver and it's obviously also configured as such in beta flight. Well, actually I'm not, I'm gonna just leave that plug as is, I'm not even gonna touch it, I'm simply gonna reconfigure settings in beta flight to use a different UART for our receiver. And to figure out which UART that should be, 
We're gonna have a look at our ports section in Betaflight. And guess what? Here is the port setup of my quadcopter. So hook up your quadcopter with a USB cable to your computer. Start the Betaflight configurator and in the second tab, the ports tab, as you can see here, you will see which ports, which UARTs your quadcopter has available. And in these digital setups you are 100% sure to have at least one UART still available. If you at least don't have things like a GPS and such, but even then you should have at least one UART available. As you can tell, my quadcopter has UART 2, 3 and 4 available. And if I wouldn't be running ESC telemetry, I would even have 7 available as well. UART 6 is my current receiver. Again, I will leave it hooked up physically, but as you can tell here, my current receiver is RX on UART 6 and that's CADEX AIU. So again, I've made sure that I have at least three UARTs available, UART 2, 3 and 4. So which will I be using? Well, for that I've uh, taken a look at my flight controller and here is my flight controller. And I hope it will be visible to you, I think it will be. Over here I've got the T2, so UART 2, 3 and 4. Easily accessible. And uh, yeah, I can pick whichever I want really. And let me see, the receiver obviously will also need power. So let me see, five volts. So here, here are five volts and ground. Easily accessible as well. So we'll just pick uh, UART 2 over here, which is uh, closest to my power. And uh, yeah, you'll have uh, to have a look at your flight controller, which is easiest. Again, you'll just need power, 5 volts, and the T portion of the UART you want to be using for your receiver. Again, I'll be using T2 UART2 for my receiver today. And this is not a soldering how-to, so I won't be showing you how to solder in this case. Yeah, you will need to do some soldering on your uh, quadcopter, three strands to hook up your receiver, which I'll do offline. And there you have it. Again, pretty simple, obviously three strands soldered to our flight controller and I've already checked it this works which is which is of course nice now I am cheating may, maybe a little bit by using an F7 flight controller here yeah that's part of the reason why I use these F7 flight controllers it makes life a lot easier so uh, yeah that might be a consideration for you as well Again, setting up receivers like this on uh, on any UART is easier on an F7 flight controller. Speaking of, I obviously need to change things in Betaflight, right, for this to work. And as mentioned uh, before, the first one uh, or the first change is on our ports tab. The previous configuration was uh, UART 6 for our SBUS receiver, and that's the the Cadex Vista receiver, basically. So we'll have to disable that and enable it on UART2, in my case at least, right? I chose UART2 for my new F-port receiver. So this is what my port step now looks like. Pretty simple, nothing to it. The second change is on the configuration tab. Obviously I need to set my receiver type here as well. And it is now F-port where it was SBUS. Now, if you are using, for instance, an XM Plus receiver, which will be an SBUS receiver as well, you don't need to change anything here, so that, that's pretty simple. More on my choice for the receiver uh, in a second, by the way. And the third thing we need to change, or at least I had to change with my F-port receiver, is in the CLI tab, in the command line interface. I had to enter three lines, the first one being set serial rx underscore inverted is on, which was off at default, and it'll probably, I'm 99% uh, sure, it'll be off in your configuration as well, so it, we need to set that as on and hit enter. Second one is set serial rx underscore half duplex is on, which again was off and again 99% sure it'll be off in your configuration. And the third line is safe and hit enter again. 
that'll change well the way your flight controller talks to your receiver and this is needed to use F ports. And that's, that's everything. So the hardware installation is pretty simple and the beta flight configuration is pretty simple as well, which is nice. So for me this has answered uh, two questions basically. Is it hard to install a secondary receiver in a digital setup like this? I think the answer is no. Physically it's easy and uh, the beta flight configuration is pretty easy as well. The, the old, if you will, receiver in that CADEX air unit isn't in the way it, uh, well it doesn't really matter basically. And the second question was whether I'd want to uh, buy that DJI remote controller, that uh, DJI radio. Um, see, it, th that is an expensive radio basically for what it is, uh, in my humble opinion. But if it would have made life a lot easier, made the configuration and, or the setup of quadcopters with the DJI setup a lot easier, then it would have been worth the money for me. Having done this once by now, however, uh, this is easy, easy peasy Japanese, <laughs> it works. So yeah, this is not enough of a hurdle for me to actually use separate receivers in my digital setups. So I hope that answered some questions for you as well. Again, maybe you were wondering how hard or easy setting up a receiver in digital setups is. Well. It is easy, really. You, it shouldn't be a hurdle for you in the consideration of trying the digital setups. And if you are left with questions, hit me up a comment down below. I hope this video was helpful to you. Catch you on the next video. Bye bye.